In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get coin ops operating on your Legends Ultimate Arcade cabinet through the Arcade Net Link app. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so what we're going to need to do first and foremost is make sure that we have downloaded the Arcade Netlink app right from the App Games website. I will leave a link in the description down below. You just click on it, download and install. It's really, really simple. Once you're all set up, you're going to need to create an account. And once you've created that account, you're going to need to log in on the computer that you want to stream from. Once that's up and running, we don't need to do anything else. We can hop right on over to our arcade cabinet. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is navigate to the BYOG section of our menu. And what we're going to notice, along with all the other options like Steam, Blizzard, and Epic Games, we're now gonna have a new section. And in my case, it's called Rostalgia Gaming PC. Whatever you name your device, that's how it's going to display. And it's gonna be located at the end of all the other options. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to go ahead and select that with our controller. So before we move on, as you guys can see, we now have access to my entire desktop computer. Anything that I want to run right from my desktop can be done right on the cabinet. You end up using the trackball as your mouse, and then you can use your A button on your first player controller as your left button click. So you pretty much can do whatever you want. If you want to watch movies, load up Kodi, play games, things like that, it's all doable. Now I do want to mention that there is an upcoming feature called My Game Room, which essentially gives you your own cloud-based computer, and that would be useful for individuals who don't have a powerful enough computer to do stuff like I'm going to do in this video. Now if you've got a regular run-of-the-mill computer, you should be able to do most of these things. However, when you're starting to get into emulation of PlayStation 2 or any of those sort of things, that's where you're going to run into some problems if you don't have the proper hardware. Now that being said, my computer is plenty powerful enough, so I'm just going to use that for this video and I'll show you guys the My Game Room in another video. In terms of installing coin ops, it's really simple. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. You'll have to download it and uh, it's really neat because you don't actually have to do anything to install it. When you download it and you extract it, it's already ready to go. It's pretty much an application that's extracted and you just double click the application and it launches. So we're going to go ahead and navigate to that and get it running. In terms of coin ops, there are a couple of options here. You can either go with the coin ops next, which is their full system, which is about 150 gigs. It's a really large program, or you can go with their coin ops next mini, which is substantially smaller. It's much more retro consoles. You're talking Nintendo arcade, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, things like that. Uh, and it's only 12 gigs. So if you are concerned about space and you don't have a ton of space, make sure to download the coin ops next mini coin op next has a way more options. And that's the one I'm going to show you guys in this video. So now that we've got coin ops up and running, as you guys can see, it is a very visually appealing uh, front end for any sort of arcade system or gaming system in general. Now this version comes preloaded with a ton of different consoles. We've got arcade games and then there's another section called arcade classics. We've got Sega Genesis. We've got Super Nintendo, we've got Computer Classics, we've got Dreamcast, we've got Game Boy Advanced, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Nintendo 64, NES, uh, Turbo Graphics or PC Engine, PlayStation, PS2, PSP. Uh, we've got Nintendo Wii even loaded up on here. I've downloaded a Legend of Zelda collection which got to be added in. It comes stock with Doom 2 and it even comes with Street Fighter 4 Ultra. So you've got a ton of things right out of the box and it's pretty much ready to go in terms of uh, configuration. Now I do want to mention some consoles need to be reconfigured in terms of their controllers, so I'll definitely show you guys how to do that with, for example, PlayStation, but in general you will have to play with some because not all consoles run efficiently with this arcade cabinet. So we're going to jump right into the arcade section here, and as you can see we end up getting kind of like a, a scrolling wheel visual attract mode. It looks really nice, and the really cool thing is that every single game that gets displayed you actually get a little bit of a video teaser on the left hand side of the screen as well. So you kind of can see exactly what it is, how the gameplay looks internally, so that way you can make the decision if it's a game you've never played, if you even want to give it a shot. So some things that people are going to get really excited about is that there are a ton of games built into this, including things like Dragon's Lair. So if you've been dying to play Dragon's Lair on your arcade cabinet, you can do it right through coin ops. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and get this game up and running. Now I do want to make note in the top right hand corner, you're going to notice latency and you're going to notice FPS. In terms of the actual latency and FPS, you're going to get substantially better performance out of any of your games if you are hardwired into your modem and your PC is also hardwired into your modem. That being said, I'm currently connected via Wi-Fi, so I could show you guys even in a worst case scenario how it operates. And it's honestly, it's really impressive how well it is working. You guys will notice that there are some consoles that would have benefited from a direct line connection, but honestly, even the way it is, it's not bad. In terms of exiting the game, it's really simple. You just have to press the rewind and the player one start button at the same time, and it'll take you right back to the main menu. Moving on over into games like uh, Genesis, just to give you guys another example, the games run really well, and there's a ton of features that are available built right within CoinOps. So when we get a game up and running, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles just to show you guys that as an example. The first thing that we're going to notice on screen is that we actually get a nice little Genesis bezel or Mega Drive bezel, depending on which region you are in. The game fits right within the screen and it looks really sharp. There is the option to put on things like scan lines or a glass filter on the front so you can kind of get that beat up look but it's not necessary. I actually prefer to not have any of those filters on. I just like looking at the actual image of the game itself. Jumping back to the menu, there's going to be a ton of consoles like Dreamcast, Nintendo GameCube, Nintendo Wii that are not really working that well with the control pad. I've not been able to find a way to get them mapped properly, so I'm going to go ahead and skip over those. Um, but I'm going to show you guys PS2. It did work right out of the box. Now, obviously, if you're looking for a game with analog, you're not going to be able to play it with the arcade stick. But there are a ton of games like Burnout 3. Uh, there was also Tekken 5, which worked really well. So I'll show you guys a little bit of those games running. Roger Jr. Get ready for the next battle. Come on! Round one. Fight! <laughs> <laughs> So another really cool thing is that CoinOps has integrated a lot of PC games, and in this case, we've got preloaded Street Fighter 4 Ultra, which is absolutely perfect for this arcade cabinet. So we're going to go ahead and get that launched. It does run perfectly well right out of the box. It's ready for two-player controls. There's nothing that needs to be configured. We can just jump into it and get a game running. So next we're going to talk about PlayStation 1. So this is one that does work and in fact you could play most of the games with the exception of Ape Escape, uh, but you do need to reconfigure the buttons. And what you're going to need in order to do that is you're going to need the keyboard that's attached to the computer and we need to hit a command in order to remap those keys. So what we need to do is jump into a game here and once the game is loaded up, on our keyboard we need to hit Alt, Shift and 1 all at the same time. And what that's going to do is it's gonna give us the ability to remap. And as you can see on the bottom of the screen, it says DualShock 1, D-pad, up button, and you have to press the buttons twice. So you'll press D-pad, button up, so in this case, joystick up, and it'll be in brackets one and two. You're gonna to have to double input it just to make sure that you press the correct button. Uh, and it's really handy. It's going to request that you map the uh, analog sticks. And what I ended up doing is I used the secondary control stick as my right analog stick. And I just remapped the left joystick as my left analog stick because in most PlayStation 1 games, uh, you can use your analog or you can use your D-pad. So it's kind of interchangeable in that way. Now again, this isn't going to be 100% perfect, I can't guarantee every single game works, but I was able to test out a few games, for example Mega Man X4, and I was also able to play uh, Crash Bandicoot, which I'm going to show you guys as well. 
and then coming right on back into the arcades. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a ton of games on here that you're going to want to play. One of the ones that I think a lot of people are going to be excited for is the arcade version of NFL Blitz. Now, it shouldn't surprise you guys that I should be able to get it up and running on my PC, but I got to tell you when I'm streaming it, it plays really, really well on this arcade cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and get this up and running and show you guys a little bit of that as well. But that's pretty much it. That's all I've got for you for this video. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the comment section below. If you guys end up messing around with the GameCube controls, the Nintendo Wii controls, or the Dreamcast controls, and you can get them up and running, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to, I'd love to figure that out. Additionally, all the links will be in the description below. Let me know if you guys need any help, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.